Hi, this is Dr. Nick, and we're going to be doing a Chalk Talk today. I've been trying very hard to get the ECG Academy up and running, but I thought I'd leave a Chalk Talk on YouTube so all of my subscribers would get to learn a little something else today. Remember, Chalk Talks are for people who know the basics, but they're designed to get you used to reading more difficult tracings. So here's the rhythm strip that I got from our CCU. So remember, look at the forest first, and as you scan across, you can see there are QRS complexes that seem to be marching through at a regular rate, except for this one. This one is clearly premature, and I think we'll come back to that. There it does seem to be a compensatory pause afterwards. So now let's look for P waves. If you uh, kind of look in front of the QRS complex, you don't see much, but as you scan in between beats, uh, there does appear to be a bump right there that seems like it could be a P wave. And if you look at some of the other beats in the same general region, you'll see that there seems to be a regular P wave that marching on through. So let's start to measure intervals. We take a the beginning of the P wave on this heavy line, and you can see the PR interval is about 400 milliseconds. Pretty long, and since it's greater than 200, we'd call it a first degree AV block, and it looks to be pretty constant. Um, let's bring out our calipers. You can put the calipers on the tip of the uh, P wave, or the beginning, depends on what you see best, but there definitely seems to be P waves mapping on through. Now let's pay attention to this beat right here. We've already established, using our calipers, that this P wave occurs on time, does it not? Because my calipers mapped it on through and this P wave occurs on time. So where did this QRS complex come from? Well, it has to be a premature ventricular contraction or PVC. Some people like to say ventricular premature contraction or VPC. Why? Well, first of all, the QRS complex looks different than the underlying QRS complexes, so it certainly did not take the normal electrical pathways down the bundle branches. The other thing is that the PR interval here, from the beginning of this P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex, is way, way, way too short. This P wave couldn't possibly have conducted, so this QRS complex must have originated from the ventricles and did not arise from this P wave. Well, the next P wave does occur on time, and then you have uh, a PR interval that's a little bit shorter. Look at that. It's um, about one small box shorter, so we'll call this 360 milliseconds. And this one's back to 400 again. Well, does that make sense? It sure does. Um, that's because after the, this bit of a pause, the AV node has a little bit of a, of a break, and so it's able to conduct this P wave a little bit more efficiently at a somewhat shorter PR interval than this one. This is not the same as Winky back, but it is a reflection that the AV node conducts better at slower rates and worse at faster rates. And the coupling interval from one beat to the next certainly plays a role in how the AV node conducts. Now here's the question, and when I look at a strip like this, I always have to wonder, am I missing something? Because we'd normally say, all right, this looks like a sinus rhythm with a first degree AV block and a PVC here, but am I missing something? Because the way the, the, the location of this P wave, it's right smack in between the two QRS complexes. And when I look at a strip like this as an ECG expert, I always wonder, could there be another P wave buried in this QRS complex? In other words, could this be some kind of atrial tachycardia with two to one conduction? With an atrial rate, well, what is the rate here? 300, 150, 175. So could this actually be an atrial rate of 150 with a long first degree because of the rapid rate? And am I missing a P wave in between? Hmm, well, prove it to me. Prove to me that there's no P wave in there. Prove to me this isn't two to one conduction. Well, I'll show you how to do that. The, the PVC is the key. Here, let me just erase some of this. The PVC is the key because the PVC disturbs the cadence. It throws the rhythm off. And, it, and because we think, we presume that there may be a P wave buried in this QRS complex, well, the next QRS complex should have landed here. Let's take our calipers and measure it on, measure the QRSs now. So if you have a QRS here to here, the next one should have landed here. So if we presume that there may be a second P wave that is occurring in the middle of the QRS complex, this PVC would not have interfered with the atrial rhythm. And so you would have seen a P wave right here, and I do not see it. Remember, P waves have a rapid deflection. They have high frequency components, and you would see that that T wave would have a little bump on it, and it does not. 
So I think we've proven that these are the only P waves. We just have sinus rhythm with first degree. The idea that this was two to one conduction has now been disproven. And I think this was kind of a neat tracing, don't you? Well, this is Dr. Nick from the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching. And remember, log on to ecgacademy.com because by the third week in December, I should be offering a basic subscription to those of you who want to become ECG experts like me. In the meantime, thanks for watching.